welcome to part two of this, this video on um, setting up triple integrals uh, with tet tetrahedrons and, and pyramids. Uh, at the end of the first video, we looked at the pyramid and we found the equation of one face. All right, and we're going to find the volume of that pyramid there, right, which has corners uh, at across the interval negative 1 to 1 for x and negative 1 to 1 for y. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the volume underneath one of the faces uh, and then multiply that by 4 because uh, there's some symmetry involved with that figure. All right, now what we ended with was looking at the projection onto the xy plane of the volume underneath this face, and that was this region here, and noted that we're better off to do horizontal slicing with this problem. All right. I just wanted to show a couple um, before we do that. I've got this figure drawn in Maple as well, so you could use the implicit plot 3D command in Maple. You could use Paul Seberger's applet or the implicit plot 3D command and plot some of these equations that we have here. I did y equals x, y equals negative x, and x plus z equals 1, which was that face. It graphs a little more than we need here, but again, what we're looking at doing, if we rotate this up, is finding the volume underneath there, underneath that plane, bounded by those planes in the xy plane. All right, I've got a couple more figures of that below. All right, here's what we're really after right here. I did this one as a parametric surface. But we're trying to find that volume, and then we're going to multiply that by 4. All right, and if we look down the z-axis, we see that triangle exactly that we just ended with in the first video. We're going to find that volume, and then multiply it by 4. Right, coming back over here. Again, horizontal, uh, vertical slices is not the way to go. For this one, so let's redraw this projection region, and then let's put the vertical slices. Uh, the vertical slices are not the way to go. We're better off going with horizontal slicing here. For this example, because we have the top is y equals 1, the kind of bottom left side of it is y equals negative x, the bottom right side is y equals x, but that side changes as um, x varies from negative 1 to 1. The bottom side changes from negative x to positive x. So we're better off going and saying, okay, let's let y be a, let's consider a generic y uh, between the bottom, which is y equals 0, and the top, which is y equals 1, and let x vary from the left side over to the right side. When we do that, we need to solve these equations for x. The left side equation, if we solve it for x, we just negate both sides and get x is negative y. This one's very, st very straightforward. Just flip the sides, and we get x is equal y. Notice that length we're talking about is a horizontal length, and therefore it should be the distance between a couple of x values. That varies with y, though. Right? The left-hand side and the right-hand side vary, and therefore the length of that horizontal slice varies as y varies from 0 to 1. Right? And in the first video, we had determined that for every xy point in the projection, um, in the xy plane, we were going to let z vary from the bottom, which is 0, up to the top, which was z given by the equation z equals y minus 1. Right, and that is a fair amount of work done in video 1. All right, so we're going to set this triple integral up now. To find a volume with a triple integral, recall that we have to integrate over our region. I'll just call that region E. Um, but we have to integrate a very special function, the constant function 1, if we're going to use a triple integral to find the volume. And so that's our integrand. Now we need to put the limits of integration on and then actually compute the integral. All right, so what did we say we we're going to do? In our projection region, we're going to let y vary from 0 to 1. For each one of those y's, we're going to let x vary from negative x, or from negative y, pardon me, to y. All right, so let's start with that. So we're going to have our triple integral. We're going to let y vary from 0 to y equals 1. For each one of those y values, we're going to let x vary from the left side, which is given by negative y, to the right side, which is given by positive y. For each one of those, we're going to let each one of those points x, y in the projection, we're going to let z vary from the bottom, which is 0, 
up to the top, which was the face we found given by the plane z equals 1 minus y. And then we're going to integrate the constant function 1. The inner, inner integral is with respect to z. The middle integral is with, with respect to x. And then the outer integral is with respect to y. So this one comes out dz dx dy instead of dz dy dx just by our choice of how we're doing the slicing. Okay, I gotta remind I gotta remind myself that we need to multiply this by four because we're finding the area under one of the, or the volume pardon me under one of the faces and we need to multiply that by four to get the volume of the whole pyramid. Alright now the integral is not that difficult to do. We will complete it. Alright and then we'll, we'll notice that that will match up with the answer you're gonna see in the OpenStax textbook, they did that problem a little different way, which you might look at it toward the end of the video. All right, so let's crank this integral out so we get 4. All right, and then again, we're going to copy down our outer and our middle integral. The antiderivative of 1 with respect to z is z, and we've got to evaluate this by plugging in negative 1 and plugging in 0 and subtracting, and then we've got to do the resulting dx dy integral. That's simply going to give us um, 1 minus y when we do that. We're replacing z by 1 minus y, replacing z by 0 and subtracting, and so that's just going to give us 1 minus y. And then we have to do the antiderivative with respect to x to do the next integral on the inside here. So integrating with respect to x, what do we have? We have um, integrate term by term. The antiderivative of 1 with respect to x is just x. The antiderivative of y with respect to y is y times x, or x times y, however you want to write that. So now we're going to replace x by y, replace x by negative y, and subtract the results. And then complete that corresponding integral. And let's be careful with how we plug these, you know, these uh, variables in. In the next step, we need to replace x by y. All right, so let me just use a bracket here. We have x minus x times y minus, and then x minus x times y. And then we need to sub substitute in, in the first case, y, in the second case, negative y. And be careful with the minus signs here. What does that give us? It's going to give us y minus y squared. I'm distributing the negative through now. It's going to be plus y. We already have two negatives inside of there. When we distribute the negative, it's going to be a minus y squared there. All right, so combining like terms, we get 4 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 2y minus y squared dy. And then continue. All right, so what, what's our antiderivative here? And the 4 is coming along for the ride. Our antiderivative term by term is y squared minus 2 thirds y cubed. And now we're going to simply plug in 1, plug in 0, and subtract. What is that going to yield for us? We're going to get 4, and then it'll be 1 minus 2 thirds. When we plug in 0, we get 0 everywhere, so that contributes uh, nothing to, to, to subtract off. All right, and we can simply see here we get 4 times 1 third, which comes out to 4 thirds. All right, now I like that approach to this problem because it is kind of natural. We're used to um, finding, uh, we used to graph things with the z in terms of x and y. All right, and in this problem, uh, in the first part in the first video, we found the equation of one face using techniques we learned in the semester, finding the equation of the plane via the cross product, and then we used this, this triple integral after we set the limits up to find the volume of the whole thing by using the symmetry that we had to multiply by 4. So we come up with 4 thirds. I'm just going to mention uh, if you look at this example in the OpenStax textbook and look at their solution, it's different than the one I have given here. I would encourage you to read through, but notice we see that they end up with the same result. All right, but what they do instead is let z vary from 0 to 1. So that's the outer integral in this case. And that, or, pardon me, that's the, yes, that's the outer integral. But, uh, again, a little different solution there. So maybe take a look at that and compare.